give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. I said, if COVID-19 happened without God's permission, then I think somebody has taken over. And I don't believe so. That means God must have permitted it. Abi. It must have been like what happened to Job. Because that magnitude of what happened to Job wouldn't have happened to him if God didn't allow it. If Satan had to take permission from God, then God said, okay, try. So I think COVID-19 is with God's permission. I believe the magnitude of the loss cannot happen to the world without God's permission. And whatever God allows from what we have seen, you see, God has a pattern. God has a way of doing his things. Anything God that is that magnitude, anything of that magnitude that God allows, he uses for his glory. This is very important for you to catch. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Anytime God allows some dimension of things to happen that far, as though he's not in charge, it's because he wants to use that thing. His silence is not without purpose. The pain you have gone through is not without purpose. There are many of us here in this message this morning, you're watching online, that there are things you're going through or that you have gone through that is too much to say God didn't allow it. I waited for about 20 years to have a, my first child, a biological child. I knew at a point there was God's hand in this one. Because if it is prayer, I have prayed. Somebody said maybe it's sin. Which sin? Those who are committing this every day, more than, you, you, you. <laughs> somebody says generational cause. Where is the cause? Ladies and gentlemen, there are some things that happen to God's children that when they get to a certain level, you should know God must have permitted it. Yeah. And I said, whatever God permits, He permits because He wants to use it. John chapter 9. A man was born blind. And the disciples said, this man was born blind. Who sinned? Is it the man or the parents? How can the man sin when he was born blind? He has not even started. How can he sin when he was born? So, so Jesus said, nobody sinned. He said, but I want to use it. I want to what? Can we talk about that a little bit? It's strange about our God that sometimes there are things he wants to use. Things that are not palatable. You lost your job and it's like he watches you to lose that job. He, maybe he wants to use it. You lost a relationship that is so important to you. Maybe he wants to use the loss. Because God used the things that looks like nothing to us and brings something out of them. This man was born blind. He said, I want to use it to manifest my glory. That's what he said. John chapter 9, go and read it. He said, I want to manifest my glory. And, and look, some delays are God's instrument. Oh, some things that look like causes are God's instruments. Some setbacks are God's instruments. God uses failure as raw material for success. God uses disappointments as raw material for miracles. God uses obstacles, difficulties as raw material for amazing opportunities. COVID-19 is an instrument in the hand of God. God wants to use it. In fact, he's already using it. He's already using it. If I don't know any testimony, I know the testimony of this church. If they are counting how many church COVID-19 brought out, is one of us. We are one of them. He shot everywhere down. Make sure everybody were watching online. Brought the wave of our services to some people. Some of them are here. While you were browsing and browsing, you would never have walked into this place because you don't even know this place. But I brought the thing and brought the thing and brought the thing and brought it to you. And at the time he brought it, it was at the right time. It was the right word that was being spoken. It was a specific word to a spe You know, Rema, Rema is defined as a specific word to a specific individual in a specific situation at a specific time. 
That's Rema. Spe- and you had that toy. He said, mm, let me hold on. Who is this? Then you spent two hours watching more videos. Then they open us up. He said, where, where is the place? Where is the place? Where is the place? Some people are here this morning. COVID-19 will bring God's blessing into your doorsteps. This dark period will bring you into limelight. This dark season will bring you into a limelight. All those things you have gone through and that you're still going through will bring you into your place of miracles. You're not saying amen properly. If you believe it, shout a bigger amen. amen. So I believe that God allows it because he wants to use it for his glory. For his glory. God sometimes uses Satan's activity for his glory. Satan's activity. How can you use Satan's activity for your glory? But we have seen that several times. He wanted to double and triple and multiply what Job had. He allowed Satan to take what he had. When Satan was true, he multiplied him. And the Bible says the end of Job was better than his beginning. He wanted to bring to pass the dream of Joseph. He took him to the bottomless pit. Took him to the house of Potiphar. Took him to the prison. He made sure that everything went to... Look, sometimes, if you, like I said last Sunday, if you're down to nothing, the hand of God may be seen there. Sometimes it's not Satan. God permits it. Everybody say, God will use it for his glory. Say everything I'm going through, God will use for his glory. He allows the darkest hours to hush in the brightest day. That's why the darkest hour of the day is the closest moment to the brightness of the day. When the thing looks so dark and very, very dark, know you are closer to the dawn of a new day. There are many people in that dimension as I speak. You have come to that point. Things have gone so bad, so dark, so dark that you're almost saying that I don't think I can take this anymore. You are the closest hour to the brightest day. Welcome to the dawn of a new day. Yo, I thought you would say amen to that. If you receive it, say a big amen. amen. Welcome to a new season. Amen. Welcome to a new season. Amen. Welcome to your new season. Amen. Welcome to the dawn of a new day. I know things have scattered, things have gone every way, wild, wild, everything. There's nothing, there's no way it's going again. No. When things hit bottom, it's coming up again. There's nothing, no way to go again. It has hit the bottom. <laughs> Are you hearing me? When we lost that pregnancy, I told God, I said, look, we need to have the point. It has now come to the breaking point. And you know that if you do more, I can break. I'm human, I can break. And he said, I won't tempt you beyond what you can carry. He's a good God. So he knew that he has, he has stretched you beyond limit. And that limit you are is the closest to the dawn of a new day. This is prophetic. I told you this message is prophetic. So it was at that point when everything, he, when he dislocated the hollow of his hip, and the man went down. Look, when, they, when anything in your hip dislocate, you go down. He was down. It was at that point when he was down and the man was like this, weak, that he wanted to leave him. He held him. He said, the little strength I have, I'll still do something. I won't give up. At least I can hold somebody. The man said, let me go. He said, I'm not going to let you go. There's something you brought. I know you, you always come with blessings. You must drop that blessing with me before you leave. And the, and the event just changed. He now became, what's your name? So he didn't even know his name before. He knows his name. He's just asking for the purpose of asking. So that he can hear from him. And the man said, my name is Jacob. My name is Supplanter. My name is Negative. My name is Diabetic. My name is, I brought pressure patients. My name is, you know, he called himself from the experiences he had. And he said, you will no longer bear that name. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you step into a new season, you bear new names. When you step into a new season, you bear new identity. When you step into a new season, everything changed. When God brought that blind man to a new season, everything changed. 
The Bible says he that was blind, now his eyes is open. Somebody is here, you've been called blind, you've been called poor, you've been called barren, you've been called failure, you've been called frustrated. You are getting a new name. A new name. He gave him a, the man said, what's my name? He said, Jacob. He said, you are no longer going to be called Jacob. It's a new season. You'll be called Israel. Israel means prince with God. Oh, look at the switch. Supplanter. Now, supplanter before, a few minutes ago. That's why I like that song, suddenly. A few minutes ago, supplanter. Now in another moment, prince with God. Does it look alike? No. What God is about to change your life into will not look like where you are coming from. It will look like your background. You are not saying it like someone who believes. It will look like your past. It will look like what you have been through. I know you have passed through the fire. I know you have passed through so many things. You will smell smoke in your body. You are not saying it like you mean it. God says, I know that this is what you think you are, but I'm going to make something out of you. It's a mess, I'll make a message. It's a test, I'll make a testimony. It's an obstacle, I'll make a miracle. Somebody is here watching online or live in this place. God said, I shall announce to you prophetically that welcome to the dawn of a new day. If you're receiving it, let your amen be louder. Please take your seat. I'm going to be hard. I'm going to stop soon. But there's something I want to quickly show you. Can we go a little deeper? First Chronicles 12, verse 32, verse 23 to 32. Now, I know we read First Chronicles 12, in, we, read, we read verse 32, when it talks about the sons of Ishaka. But it will have a deeper understanding. Let's read First Corinthians, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 30, 23. Let's read from the New Living Translation, NLT. Because it breaks... It brought out the figures. I want to show you some figures. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 23. These are the numbers of armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. He said, let me give you the list of the soldiers that back up an ordinary shepherd boy and fought for him to become a king. Let's read it again. Don't take it off. The numbers of the hand warriors who joined David at Hebron, they were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul. When you get to the verge of a new day, the dawn of a new day, God will send people that will be committed to your life. People that will say you can't fail. I don't want to see this man fail anymore. This woman fail. Now, these are people, or different people, soldiers. The Bible says they were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul. Just as the Lord had promised, people will make sure the promise of God come to pass in your life. God is sending them in their soldiers. I mean, in their, in their, in their many. They are coming. Like a soldier. Like a crowd. Are you here? Help will be plenty in your life. That's the prayer we prayed on Wednesday. Maybe you have forgotten. I was online. I was there too. He said, help will be plenty in your life. Come and see the help. Let's continue. Let's see the help. You'll be shocked. From the tribe of Judah, there were 6,800 warriors armed with shield and spears. <laughs> From Judah. From one tribe alone. There were 6,800 armed with shield and spears who said he must become the king. They will fight on your behalf. They will defend you. It's God who has raised them. So they will stand to fight for you. Whoever says God's promise will not come to pass your life, they will say, no, you can't stop him. <laughs> 6,800 from Judah. The next verse. From the tribe of Simeon, there were 7,100. Ah, they are increasing. 7,100. Brave. These ones are... Now, the good thing is that God is giving out the specific area of their specialty. These ones are brave warriors. They are smart warriors. These ones don't fight with too much strength. They are just intelligent. God will bring some intelligent people into your life, into your business, into your circle. Brave warriors. 7,100. Help is near. Very close. Seven, who says he must be king? 
Who are you? <laughs> Look at the next verse, 26. From the tribe of Levi, there were 4,600 warriors. 4,600. Are you adding these things up? They are now close to, it's more than 15 now. Eh? Close to 15,000 now. Are, am I correct? More than 15 now. More than 15 now. More than 15,000. 6,800. 7,100. 4,600. How many? 18,500. Who says, touch him and you, and, and you, and, and you see. Just touch him. God is raising people for you. Yeah. Who will defend you? Yeah. Who will fight for you? There will be many. Yeah. There will be plenty. Yeah. In your father's house, they will fight for you. In your mother's house, they will fight for you. In your in-law's house, they will fight for you. Among your enemies, they will fight for you. Look at the next one. This includes Jehoiada, Je <laughs> you know, uh, leader of the family of Aaron, who had 3,700 under his command. One man brought 3,700 that will listen to him. And the Algar say, I'm in support of David. What, to, what do you want to do? And they all brought their weapons. They all brought their resources. They are ready to see that the promise of God come to pass in your life. Are you ready for these people? They are, they are coming in their thousands. Some of them, you don't know them. They've never met you before. He said in his word, he said, I will send strangers to give you help. He said, strangers will minister to you. Help will come from strange. Look, I've come to realize in my work with God that people don't know you help you more. 